What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about a $27 bottle of whiskey versus a $300 bottle of whiskey. Hey guys, welcome back to Gents Lounge. I'm George. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not hit that subscribe button yet, hit that right now. Ding that little bell icon so you get notified every time we release a new video. So today we're switching gears from fashion and we're moving to whiskey and talking about what makes a whiskey worth it. Now, all these whiskeys are very, very good whiskeys, but they're all at very, very different price points. So we have $27, $75, and about $300. So first of all, I'm going to tell you what makes a whiskey more expensive than others and what you're paying for that kind of raises the price on things. So first of all, where the whiskey is from. If you're in the country that the whiskey is produced in, chances are it's going to be a lot cheaper. So if you're in America and you're drinking bourbon, um, honestly, the closer you are to Kentucky and Tennessee, the cheaper the bourbon is going to be. But basically, the further away from where it's from, the more expensive the price is gonna be because it's gotta come overseas, obviously. Scotland's gotta come across the water. Japanese whiskey's gotta come from Japan. And that's just gonna make things a little bit more expensive. So number two, generally the longer a whiskey is aged, the more expensive it's going to be. One, because it's spending more time in a barrel, in a warehouse, taking up space, costing the manufacturer more money to hold it for that long. And two, because whiskey evaporates every year with the heat and the you know just kind of being in the barrel it's porous so you lose a little bit which is called the angel share every year so you get less and less whiskey the longer you age it therefore making it more expensive number three on the list is the ingredients used which is pretty much if you're thinking in fashion terms like the quality of the leather or you know the manufacturing process and this is a little tougher to determine I mean, you can, unless you go to the distillery and see what they're doing firsthand and know where they're sourcing their grains from, it's a little tough to tell, but I mean, a lot of these brands tell a good story and tell you kind of where they're sourcing their grains from, why they're better, um, you know, they do a little extra step in certain whiskey making processes. So that's going to add to the price as well, but that one's a little more hard to uh, kind of put a tangible amount on how much that is worth. So basically, let's get into the whiskey. So this bottle right here is $27, 1972, small batch bourbon. Um, it is bourbon, so it's in America, relatively cheap. It's very good. Um, you can drink this neat, you can drink it on the rocks. I prefer this kind of in a cocktail, an old fashioned or something where the, you know, the whiskey still stands up, but it doesn't quite get covered up. And it's a really good everyday whiskey and it's 27 bucks. So basically you could buy three bottles of this for one bottle of this. So this is the single malt Miyagi Ko from the Nika distillery in Japan. So I will tell you this is the one that I'm kind of iffy on if it is actually worth it because before five years ago, six years ago, Japanese whiskey was so freaking cheap and they were making it the same way and then someone found it and discovered it was actually really freaking good, and then they jacked up the price. So I have a bottle of Yamazaki 12 that I bought for Blake's birthday five years ago when I first met him, and I paid 60 bucks for that bottle. And now that bottle is like 120, 130, if you can find it. And I don't know, because I knew what I paid for it before. They didn't change anything. Does that make it more worth it because it's more exclusive? I don't know, leave me a comment down below if you think exclusivity and owning something like that makes it valuable and is, makes it better whiskey. I don't think it does. So this one is really good. It is also a very good entry to Japanese whiskey at 75 bucks and um, you know, highly recommend it if you have the funds. But probably there's much better whiskey with less hype behind it for less money. So. I will say that. And last but not least, we have this from Brooklotti. So this is a 26 year old um, unpeated single malt. And it is really, really, really good. This is my favorite whiskey of all time. I've had the previous versions. This is a brand new version. It's two years older, but it is 26 years old. So guys, let me tell you that if you try to get a Glen Levitt or Macallan 25, you are going to spend above probably five to eight hundred dollars. And this guy, the suggested retail price is 275 pounds. Okay guys, I'm gonna be honest, I will say that most whiskeys over 
$125 are not worth it. You're kind of paying for hype and it doesn't get that much better after that. It does get better, yes, it tastes better, but if it's worth paying triple or quadruple the amount of money, I don't know. Now, if you have money like that, go for it. But if you're on a budget and you're looking for something that tastes good, drinks well, and you can afford to have a few bottles on your shelf at one time, um, yeah, I'd say stay below 125. There's so many great options below that, but I will say this is my favorite whiskey of all time. It is really good and it is worth it for me to have on hand in my house for special occasions because um, one, I don't think a lot of people know about Brooklady. So, and two, it's a 26 year old whiskey, which is impressive to people that don't know whiskey at all, which I do not serve this to most people that don't know whiskey at all. But I will say that all of these whiskeys on this list are worth their price for what they are because this is pretty much getting like 75% off any other 25, 26 year old whiskey. So this is a really, really good deal for what it is. This is a very good deal for the hype behind the Japanese whiskey craze. This is still reasonably priced and very good. And this guy right here from 1972 is just a workhorse. You don't feel bad mixing it in a cocktail and you can drink it neat or on the rocks and still enjoy it. So I think that's what really makes a good whiskey is something you know you can afford to drink and you want to drink. And that's really all that matters, guys. All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps up the video. I'd say, you know, the sweet spot for very, very good whiskey is honestly probably between $25 and $85. Like right in that range, there's so many good things and so much good stuff that to go above that is, you know, just because you want to or you really, really, really like something. Um, you know, it does get better, but I don't know if it gets exponentially better after that point. So let me know in the comments below what you think the sweet spot for really, really great whiskey is, and we'll have a little talk about it. But once again, thank you guys for watching. I'll have a link to all these down below if you wanna check it out. Um, thanks to Brooklady 1972 and Nika Whiskey for you know having this on my bar and making really, really good stuff. Um, once again, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like this video, and uh, ding that little bell icon so you get notified every time we release a new video. Cheers, guys. Thank you.